So now let's see how to generate this decision tree with SAS Studio. Following my lib name statement and data step, which I am using to call in the data set that I have managed for the purpose of this analysis, called Tree Add Health, I will turn on ODS Graphics with the statement ODS Graphics On. ODS stands for Output Delivery System, which manages the output and displays, such as those in HTML. Next, we'll include PROC HP Split, the SAS procedure that builds tree-based statistical models for classification and regression. With it, we include the seed option, which allows us to specify a five-digit random number seed, which will be used in the cross-validation process. Here, I choose the random number 15,531, followed by a semicolon. Within the context of PROC HP split, our class statement should include both the binary categorical target variable, as well as categorical explanatory variables we wish to be considered within our model. Similar to the model statement used in regression analysis, we next include the keyword model, our target or response variable, treg1, followed by an equal sign, and then the full list of explanatory variables, both categorical and quantitative, followed by a semicolon. The grow and prune statements control two fundamental aspects of building decision trees, that is, growing and pruning. We use the grow statement to specify the criterion for splitting internal nodes into additional internal or terminal ones, sometimes called parent and child nodes, as the tree is grown. The goal of the partitioning that occurs when a decision tree is grown is to recursively subdivide in such a way that the values of the target variable for the observations in the terminal or leaf nodes are as similar as possible. As I've mentioned, the process of building a decision tree begins with growing a large full tree based on the randomly selected training sample. The HP split procedure provides different types of criteria for growing this full tree and splitting internal nodes in such a way that minimizes the node's impurity or error. The Gini index, entropy, and residual sums of squares, to name a few. Each can be used to assess candidate splits for each node. You select a criterion by specifying it as an option in the grow statement. Entropy is the most common and highly recommended choice when growing a classification tree. Gini is another common option. Based on the grow criterion that is selected, the growth process continues until the tree reaches a maximum depth of 10 split levels. The result is often a large tree that overfits the data and is likely to perform poorly by not adequately generalizing to new data. The solution is to find a smaller subtree that results in a low error rate on both the training and validation samples. To do this, you use the prune statement to specify the method you'd like to use for pruning. The most common and recommended method is pruning through cost complexity. Cost complexity can be requested for either a categorical or quantitative target or response variable by specifying prune cost complexity. This algorithm is based on making trade-offs between the complexity, that is size of the tree, and the error rate to help prevent overfitting. Thus, large trees with a low error rate are penalized in favor of smaller trees. Finally, after specifying my grow and prune choices, I end my program with a run statement. So let's run the program and take a look at the output. We can see in the model information table that the decision tree that SAS grew has 252 leaves before pruning and 20 leaves following pruning. Model event level lets us confirm that the tree is predicting the value 1, that is, yes, for our target variable regular smoking. I should note that in my original data set, I coded regular smoking as 1 equals yes and 0 equals no. But because SAS predicts the lowest value of our target variable, this caused my model event level to be 0 or no. So I needed to recode the no's for regular smoking to a 2, keeping 1 equal to yes. To be able to interpret your trees correctly, it's important to pay attention to this detail. Notice too that the number of observations read from my data set was 6,508, while the number of observations used was only 4,574. 4,574 represents the number of observations with valid data for the target variable 
and each of the explanatory variables. Those observations with missing data on even one variable have been set aside. Next, by default, PROC HP split creates a plot of the cross-validated average standard error, ASE, based on number of leaves each of the trees generated on the training sample. A vertical reference line is drawn for the tree with the number of leaves that has the lowest cross-validated ASE, in this case, the 21 leaf tree. The horizontal reference line represents the average standard error plus one standard error for this complexity parameter. Often, the 1 minus SE rule is applied when you are pruning via the cost complexity method to potentially select a smaller tree that has only a slightly higher error rate than the minimum ASE. Selecting the smallest tree that has an ASE below the horizontal reference line is in effect implementing the 1 minus SE rule. By default, SAS uses this rule to select and display the final tree. Following the pruning plot that shows a general model with 10 split levels and 21 leaves, the final smaller tree is presented which shows the model I described previously with splits on marijuana use, race, deviant behavior, alcohol use, and grade point average. SAS also generates what's called a model-based confusion matrix which shows how well the final classification tree performed. The total model correctly classifies 42% of those who have smoked regularly, that is, 1 minus the error rate of 0.58, and 96% of those who have not, again, 1 minus the 4% error rate. So we are clearly better able to predict those who are protected against regular smoking during adolescence, and less likely to predict those who are at risk for regular smoking. Next, a receiver operator characteristic curve is displayed, known as the ROC curve, which shows sensitivity, that is the true positive rate, and specificity, the true negative rate, plotted against each other. Finally, SAS provides a variable importance table. Due to the fact that decision trees attempt to maximize correct classification with the simplest tree structure, it's possible for variables that do not necessarily represent primary splits in the model to be of notable importance in the prediction of the target variable. When potential explanatory variables are, for example, highly correlated or provide similar information, for example, are separate variables measuring race, only one is likely to be selected for the model. The absence of the alternate variable from the model does not necessarily suggest that it's unimportant, but rather that it's masked by the other. To evaluate this phenomenon of masking, an importance measure is calculated on the primary splitting variables and for competing variables that were not selected as a primary predictor in our final model. In short, the importance score measures a variable's ability to mimic the chosen tree and to play the role as stand-in for variables appearing as primary splits. Here we see that variables such as school connectedness, alcohol problems, and age have important scores that are relatively similar to grade point average, which was selected as a split in our final model. Notably, while decision trees such as this one are easy to interpret and they're often quite informative, it's also important to recognize that small changes in the data or decisions that you make about the modeling approach can lead to very different splits. 